celebrate the ascension of the Lord, let's acknowledge our sins and prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. At the Father's right hand, you pray for God's people. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. From the midst of angels and saints, you call us to our true home in heaven. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. To your church on earth, you will return in glory at the sound of the last trumpet. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the Apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John was baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When He had said this, as they were looking on, He was lifted up, and a cloud took Him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as He was going, Suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Put all things beneath his feet 
and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. of 
being together as friends. It seems today that Memorial Day is sandwiched in between the thinking that it represents the beginning, unofficial beginning, if you will, of summer, and the 4th of July, the celebration of our nation. Slowly over the years, I noticed that the crowds got smaller, that fewer people came to this little celebration that was so important to my family. And finally, when I was near to being a teenager, it stopped altogether. But being by myself a little bit now, I am beginning to think more about what that ceremony and what that tradition meant. I know because my grandfather was in World War I, my uncle, my father's brother in World War II, and my dad in World War II as well, that what my grandmother used to call Decoration Day had become more commonly known as Memorial Day. Memorial meaning the markers on graves and the places where people have been laid to rest. I thought a little bit about the Ellis family and what they had done. Two lost in the Second World War. A baby died at birth. And several other of the family members there in a plot that would take 12 graves would hold 12 people. My grandfather mentioned to me once that as a bugler in the First World War, in the trenches in France, that he would always eat his dessert first. He wasn't sure if he would be alive if he waited until the end of the meal. My uncle Tom, my father's brother, was first in in Iwo Jima. He was in the Navy, and he piloted one of the landing crafts that brought the men to the beach. He watched some of the people that he knew jump off in the water and drown because they couldn't get close enough to the beach in order to make a safe landing. My dad was first in at Guadalcanal, 19 years old. He lost his thumb when a bomb blew up nearby where he was. He was in the construction battalion called a CB for short, and it was his job to build roads and airstrips and houses and all kinds of different things for the men once our forces had taken possession. These men were uncommonly brave, as all of the people were who went to war, who went to battle, and who went to the battles after the Second World War. Seems as though, as a people, we are in constant struggle. We are in always an agitated state. Peace does not reign supreme for long. But the sacrifices that they made, men and women, and the sacrifices and courage that they showed were what made them to me a hero and heroes and heroines. I had a chance this past week to take a look in a little box that my father had in his house when he died. I packed it away when I moved here to Delaware and I'm just now getting around to doing some of the unpacking, if you will. And in that box were some pictures of him in, on, on Guadalcanal. Again, he was 19 years old, smiles and full of hope. He hadn't met my mother yet, but there was a future for him if he could only make it through. He was standing in one picture beside 
one of those famous road signs that we see sometimes in war pictures. Signs where arrows point one way to Chicago and one way to Tokyo and one way to wherever. And they give the mileage, 3,000 miles, 2,000 miles, whatever it is. But this particular picture struck me because there was one arrow that was pointing to the sky. And just written on it was the word heaven a little question mark beside where the distance should have been. And I looked at it for a long time I realized that it was there to help me to understand about the ascension and about our Lord. I believe that the ascension, like Memorial Day, is an often forgotten feast. It follows the resurrection and leads to Pentecost. Sometimes in some dioceses we celebrate it on a Thursday, and other times it takes the place of the seventh Sunday in Easter. Our Lord, as my mother would say, is exactly where he belongs now. We say in the creed, that he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I'm not sure if heaven is up, here, there. I don't know if I can theologically grab and wrap my mind around that idea. I do know that our Lord stands supreme in the list of heroes. He stands supreme in what he did, and all of those people who have faced challenging times, have faced wars, have faced famines, whatever it is, they step up and they do what needs to be done. The ascension leads to Pentecost, but without the ascension, Jesus wouldn't be in his right place, seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us and to be our inspiration and our guide. It is the completion to me of the Paschal mystery. It is the time when Jesus in his transfigured state entered into his glory, changed from human substance to his heavenly reality. It's what gives me hope. It's what tells me, as the reading said today, that he will always be with us, no matter what. I never got an opportunity to ask my dad what it was like to be in the war because he never wanted to talk about the war. But he died in 2003, and his brother, my Uncle Tom, died in 2011. So I had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with Tom, and he would talk to me a little bit about his experience in the war, some of the people that he knew who were no longer alive, when he talked about the landing at Iwo Jima, he started to cry. Sixty years later, the event was still with him. And the tragedy of watching people so brave and so courageous step out for a dream, for the dream of liberty, for the dream of justice, for the dream of equality, for the dream of having a future guided by God. Jesus ascended to wherever heaven is so that we could share with him the divinity of who he is and the hope 
of what he has imagined that we could be, of what we are meant to be in his eyes. When the play came out years ago, Jesus Christ Superstar, I thought, well, I don't know, this is really pushing the envelope about how we might define and call, name, Jesus. But after thinking about what these men and women have done, who we need to remember on Monday, it seems to me as though Superstar doesn't even describe the beginning. At three o'clock on Monday afternoon, all of America is asked to take one minute of silence to remember those men and women in all wars and in all conflicts who have given their lives so that we might be able to be together as a community of faith. I know it's been taken from us at this moment, but Jesus said that his church will prevail and that is the primary hope that keeps us going. So please join me at three o'clock, our time, local time, for one minute to honor the men, the women, all of the people who throughout our time have stood tall and answered the call. The number one on the list, number one on the list is the man on the cross. Stand and do the Apostle's Creed, the profession of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting that Jesus is with us always by the power of the Holy Spirit, let's offer all our praise to our loving Father in heaven. For the church, may she experience an increase in clergy, religious, and lay leaders to serve and proclaim the gospel to all people. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern, May they work tirelessly for peace, justice, and religious tolerance, always keeping in mind the most vulnerable among us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For graduates and their parents and teachers who guide them, may they know the presence of the Holy Spirit and use their talents for the good of God's kingdom as they journey into the next chapter of their lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling in any way during this pandemic, especially those affected with COVID-19, those who are hospitalized or reside in nursing homes, rehab facilities, and prisons. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and well-being of our health care workers, all essential workers, and the members of our military, law enforcement, fire safety, and first responders, we pray. Lord, we pray. For the sick, the lonely, the anxious, and the bereaved, that they may know the comfort and hope of God's abiding presence 
and their connection to the broader body of Christ, we pray. Lord, for our beloved dead, may they rejoice forever in the heavenly kingdom, especially our recently deceased and the men and women who have died in service to our nation. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our parish community and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father in heaven, your Son is now seated at your right hand, enthroned in eternal glory. We make all our petitions through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of your church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. He is right and just. 
is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from the lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people excels in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace and leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate the divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, in the midst of this pandemic, we mourn the loss of those who have died, and we pray for their families. We are unable to, and we who are unable to get together, who are who are unable to get together to mourn for their loved ones, and we pray for the 40 million people who are unemployed as a result of the pandemic in this country. As a community of faith, we mourn our loss of the ability to be together to celebrate the sacraments and to personally interact with people who are in need. But in order to prevent more deaths and more mourning, we listen to the advice of the medical and scientific experts in our response to COVID-19. Until there is a universal testing, no one knows who has it. It takes two weeks to manifest symptoms, and there are people with the virus who never are symptomatic. The safest course of action is to stay home, to stay in place. If we do need to go out, we need to wear a mask, social distance, and frequently wash our hands for 20 seconds. This is the new normal. The bishop this week issued guidelines to the pastors on the opening of our churches based on the best medical and scientific advice. Our first priority is the health and the safety of our parishioners. The clergy and parish staff are reviewing these guidelines and are in the process of determining how we can implement them. This will take some time and certainly will take patience. For sure, masks, social distancing, and suitable uh, sanitation of the church will, have, will, will be in place. If you are at high risk for the virus, 65 or older, or have underlying health conditions, have a cough, high fever, shortness of breath, or exposed to someone who has had the virus in the last 14 days, do not come to church when it is open. Jesus tells us to love one another. This is a way for you to practice his command by not putting yourselves or others at risk. As Deacon Howard said, this weekend we honor our war memorial, our war veterans, those who, who fought for us and who died for us uh, to keep us free. We are called to be heroes in this sense too, that we stay home, that we do what we can to protect ourselves and to protect others out of love. As we put our plan together and have a, and have a timeline, we will contact you through our parish email system as to the protocols for entering and being seated in the church and the times that Mass will be celebrated. Next week we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit knits us together as the body of Christ, even though we cannot be together in this place. We are together in the Lord. And so let us continue to pray for one another, let us pray for the end of the pandemic, and let us pray for all those who have been affected by it. May God bless you. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you.